<laughs> and who are we gonna destroy? The stupid dog! <laughs> Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan, and today we will be exploring 15 of the absolutely petrifying, horror striking villains of Courage the Cowardly Dog backstories explored. To determine a show by its genre is to follow a set of guidelines while uniquely fitting into its mold, and Courage the Cowardly Dog happens to be a masterpiece in subversion. Part of what made the show's horror slapstick work was the sheer anarchy. It never really turned out the way that one expected, and because of that, the show managed to blend both dread and comedy in a way that was both unique and surprising at the same time. Initially created as a seven-minute animated short film known as The Chicken from Outer Space, creator John R. Dilworth first introduced the character of Courage back in February of 1996. No wonder the segment was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film and eventually caught the attention of Cartoon Network. The show was given a green light, and it went on to become the exceedingly popular comedy horror TV series spanning over four seasons and generating 52 exciting animated episodes. Look, Courage, I'm a supermodel. During its run from 1999 to 2002, the series received abundant recognition. It secured three Golden Reel Awards and was also the recipient of an Annie Award for Outstanding Individual Achievement for Production Design in an Animated Television Production in 2000. The series, which was principally known for its dark, surreal humor and atmosphere, revolved around the anthropomorphic dog living with an elderly couple in a farmhouse in the middle of the town of Nowhere in Illinois. Dilworth also acknowledged the surrealist painter Salvador Dali as a source of inspiration in his work. We believe that it's solely how subversive the visual horror gets that made this show memorable, driving not just kids but also young adults into investing themselves in the show. We are particularly going to stress on the villains of this series in today's video, shedding light on 15 of the most petrifying horror-striking villains and their backstories explored. Before we go into today's analysis, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just a small step for you, but for us, it definitely means a lot. Thanks. Now, on with the video. Welcome to Cat's Candy. I'm Cat's. <laughs> Number one, cats. To every soul that grew up watching Courage the Cowardly Dog, you cannot possibly forget this iconic villain. The lanky red cat with purple highlights is mostly remembered for his spiteful sadistic maneuvers and the fact that he's the one true arch nemesis of Courage. Having appeared in every season, this character had his own theme song that played in the background whenever he was around. There's no place to run and no place to hide. The Master of Disguise also dresses up according to the scam that he's plotting. This could be at a vacation resort, confectionery shop, a motel, or even a submarine cruise line. His sinister and deceptive behavior has him hold absolutely no regard for the lives of others. It would not be wrong to address him as a thorough psychopath. Katz made his debut in the first episode of the first season, entitled A Night at the Katz Motel where it is shown that he often kills his clients, or should we say, feeds the customers of the cat's motel to his giant pet spiders. Oh! Like most other cats, he absolutely loathes dogs, but having said that, he particularly detests courage and is willing to go to any extent to torment the dog during their conflicts. His character is even shown to indulge in some pre-defeat sport with Courage. The first episode has him challenging Courage to an energetic game of racquetball, a game that Katz effortlessly plays while reading a book on spiders and enjoying a cup of tea simultaneously. In his second appearance, Katz is shown to run the exclusive Club Cats on an island where Eustace, Muriel, and Courage wash ashore post their luxury cruise going awry. He eventually takes the old couple to the spa, where dogs are not allowed for obvious reasons. I'm sorry, no dogs allowed. 
resort rules, I'm afraid. The duo get transformed into a washing machine and a wrecking ball, each matching their respective personalities. Katz has them pit against each other in an abandoned coliseum to fight to the death for his own entertainment. Oh, I love a good family brawl. The character in his Mr. Katz disguise dons a crisp, white button-down shirt featuring pockets, a pocket square boutonniere, and a white tie. He is also seen wearing a light blue shirt inside. He has notably different attires complementary to the temporary businesses that he specializes in every episode. In Cat's Candy, his character goes to unthinkable limits at the thought of losing to Muriel and coming second once more in the annual Nowhere Street Stuff contest. So much so that he ends up abducting both Muriel and Courage to force them into revealing the secret ingredient in her recipe, which is eventually disclosed to be vinegar. Of course, he is devastated when he has to settle for second place yet again. That's not all for Katz. He made further appearances in episodes called Cats Under the Sea in the third season and Ball of Revenge in the fourth season. While in the former episode, he manifests as the captain of the SUB Standard Cruise Submarine. The latter episode has him teaming up with the other villains, namely Le Quack, Weremol, Cajun Fox, Giant Foot, Black Paddle Queen, and the jealous Eustace to get rid of Courage once and for all, exacting his revenge. There is no denying that his character is absolutely evil. His civilized and well-mannered act easily makes him a villain capable of sending chills down the audience's spine every time. In fact, he holds the seventh rank in the top 10 greatest Cartoon Network villains of all time by Watch Mojo. I am the amazing Mondo. Then show me something amazing. Number two, the amazing Mondo. At first glance, he looks like a human magician, at most, a mysterious one. Some would even say that he resembles the Star Wars character, Lando Calrissian. Mondo is disclosed to be a rather ugly character that wore a human costume to keep his secret identity intact. Say hello to this demonic magician, who is the main antagonist in the episode Mondo Magic. I am now a head of letters. The episode starts with a mysterious magician observing Muriel. Soon, a knock is heard on the door, and Courage opens it to find a present there. As he unwraps the gift, he pulls out a top hat and a wand and plays pretend magician, making a posy of flowers appear. As Courage grabs a chest from the box and opens it, a magician materializes out of thin air. This impresses Muriel, and she claims that this was the best trick that she had ever seen. The magician discloses himself to be the amazing Mondo, adding that he doesn't do tricks. Instead, he performs magic. I don't do tricks, I do magic. This does not satisfy Eustace, who wishes to see something as amazing as Mondo's name. The magician uses a bag of magic dust, makes creatures such as giraffes, tigers, and doves appear. As Eustace still doubts Mondo's ability, the latter entraps him in a television. Where am I? Hey, I'm in the TV! The magician next places a cloth over Muriel's head and sprinkles some magic dust over her. Pulling off the sheet, Muriel at first glance looks like her normal self, but soon she has two slug-like eyes poking out from behind her glasses. Of course, Courage screams in terror and literally begs Mondo to turn Muriel back to her previous self. But according to the magician, Show's over, kid. Right after this, Courage realizes who he's dealing with. The canine tries to stop the magician in vain, biting his cape and in the process, revealing Mondo's true form. We are looking at a green spiked shelled monster with slug-like eyes. Mondo's actual plans are unveiled. All he wanted was to turn Muriel into a similar creature and make her his bride. A noteworthy point is that this villain simply doesn't let anyone come in the way of executing his plans to perfection. For instance, he does not spare Mr. Vindaloo, and he transforms the doctor's head into lettuce. <laughs> Scary, right? Well, it's pretty hard to disregard a villain like Mondo, especially when one has an eyeball scorpion stinger protruding from his tail. Also, with razor-sharp teeth like that, does anyone really stand a chance? Number 3. 
The Ulcer. Meet one of the series' top-tier surreal characters, the Ulcer. To those who are not aware, he is literally an ulcer with a tiny humanoid body and a perchant for trapping people in a showroom and asking them to perform an act on him. And God forbid, if he didn't like their performance, he would dip them into a pool of toxic stomach acid. Putting strength on his origin, the ulcer was initially a man who lived in Hollywood. Having spent a majority of his life witnessing people throw away their talents for fame and fortune, he ultimately became an ulcer inside his very own stomach. People selling themselves, their talent, their art, for fame. The showroom, where he apparently spent all those years, became covered in his organs, and the heart and stomach juices below the stage. As for him, he morphed into a distorted fetus-like creature, one with an enormous head and a tiny shrunken body inside some fluid-filled bubble. Coming back to the episode titled Cabaret Courage, Courage along with Muriel and Eustace somehow managed to drop themselves into the showroom from the street above. The Ulcer offers Muriel the life of her favorite actress and Eustace a golden truck, but it goes without saying that he ends up hating the duo's performance dropping them into the stomach acid. When Courage demands that he give them back, the ulcer asks him to perform, and if he succeeds, he will give the dog anything he wants. Dog, perform for me. If you please me, I'll let you pick your prize. We all know how that turned out. Guess it would not be wrong to say that the ulcer is more like an exemplified version of the literal growing ulcer in his own body. Everything from the anomalous movements of the body parts, the constant references to the living, bile-infested flesh, and the giant size of it all only makes this character genuinely scary to look at, but also one of the most terrifying villains of the series. Number 4. The Queen of the Black Puddle Largely regarded as one of Courage's signature enemies, the Black Puddle Queen, or the Queen of the Black Puddle, is a mysterious seductive sea demon, residing in an underwater castle. Making her first appearance in the episode entitled Queen of the Black Puddle, this attractive sea demon steals Eustace away from Muriel after a rather nasty thundering storm. The Black Puddle Queen not only likes to seduce people in her underwater palace, but her main objective is to devour him. Unlike other sea nymphs, she doesn't wait for her victims to reach her kingdom. Instead, she dynamically likes to hunt down for her potential victims. What makes her character even more creepy is the fact that she can turn into any form of water, be it droplets, steam, tap water, or even tea. This leads to augmented possibilities of her being able to lure people from literally any part of the world. Wondering why she is known as the Puddle Queen? Well, the underwater entity is adept to putting a spell on her victims, leading them close enough to puddles and then trapping them inside her underwater lair. That's not all. Once she takes her victims back to her underwater castle, she puts up a rather ritualistic seductive dance for them. Let's not miss out on the way she dresses up her prey with necklaces made out of shells. To those who have not seen this episode, know that this beautiful sea demon can wind up looking pretty terrifying once she morphs into her true monstrous form with razor sharp teeth. All that's left are smiling skeletons littering across the grounds of her underwater castle. Once the puddles dry up, mind you, they are the only escape routes. There's no way out. Her character can also shapeshift into a canine to seduce them and ultimately feast on their flesh. There's no denying that she is quite sadistic. Right before she gears herself up to relish Eustace, she wears this wicked grin on her face. Mark our words, that particular imagery, along with her dialogue, can still make your blood run cold after 21 long years. While Courage is eventually able to save the day, the Black Puddle Queen appears in several other episodes, and she is easily one of the most recurring villains. Number 5. The Spirit of the Harvest Moon How does the image of a huge white floating human-like head with black eye sockets, black lips, and a white nose sound to you? Pretty dreadful, right? Now think of all the times when this enormous visual haunted the dreams of not only children, 
but also young adults. The reason was a petty one. This demonic spirit was upset with the Begi for disrespecting their farmland and by never giving an offering on the night of the harvest moon. This drove the demonic spirit to such heights of rage and irritation that he casted a spell on the whole farm, generating all kinds of bizarre events and threatening them to leave their house unless they somehow managed to grow a plant in 10 minutes. We kid you not. You have until midnight to grow something. And if, you if you thought that's all, we urge you to think again. Once the time limit of 10 minutes was up, the spirit raised the temperature to extreme levels, causing everything around to melt. Thanks to Courage being able to grow a plant using Eustace's sweat, yes, you heard that right, the spirit brought down the temperature to normal and left a rather cryptic yet meaningful message about how they need to grow more than just one plant. You have grown more than a plant. Happy planting. No wonder this character, because of its uniquely unsettling exterior and the dark, uneven voice capable of sealing the fates of the baggy, could be addressed as one of the scarier villains in the entire series. Number 6. Evil Weevil Say hello to this refined insect, one that actually dresses like an English butler. We shall stress on that top hat, white shirt, buttoned coat and tie. This character, who is otherwise quite polite and well-educated in the field of pleasing and waiting on his guests, in reality consumes human life force, gradually and rather surreptitiously. Despite this, the evil weevil is also an expert when it comes to eating the most nauseating food, like an old rancid boiled broccoli. Oh, just the thought of it can make one puke their guts out. Featured in the episode Evil Weevil, the storyline begins with Eustace inadvertently running over a giant human-sized weevil while driving his truck. As a way of asking for forgiveness, Muriel invites the insect to dinner, oblivious to the fact that she has invited trouble, and in this case, a blood-sucking parasite into their very home. The episode boasts quite a few scenes showing how sly and evil the weevil actually is. There's a scene where the evil is giving Eustace a shoulder massage and simultaneously using his tongue to drink from his prey. And that's not all. And that's not all. His insatiable hunger pangs eventually transform Eustace into a pile of dust that's later put inside a planting pot in hopes he will grow back into his old self. The weevil can be categorically regarded as one of the creepiest terror-striking villains that teaches us why we should never judge a book by its cover. Number 7. The Windmill Vandals The Windmill Vandals are a team of four horsebacked vandals who used to torment the land of nowhere. Farmer Giles Gallette, who not only constructed but also lived in the farmhouse some 250 years ago, had built the windmill next to the farmhouse. He had inscribed each blade with mystical rune symbols, and they spun to keep the vandals at bay. So you can imagine what happened when the windmill stopped spinning. Windmill stops turning, the vandals will rise from the dead. Appearing in the self-titled episode, the ghosts of the vandals not only attempted to destroy the farmhouse, but also its current inhabitants, especially after the windmill stops. Although Courage, along with Eustace, tried to repair the windmill and managed to make the vandals disappear for a brief period, they keep coming back as soon as the windmill breaks down once again. The way that the show has resorted to more traditional sorts of curses made the fright feel even more real and haunting. We are talking about all things supernatural and build up suspense of the undead. The Vandals dedicate their lives and afterlives to destroying the windmill, along with the inhabitants of the farmhouse, making this episode incredibly tense. The Vandals definitely deserve a mention for sincerely being one of the most powerful villains to have ever been featured on this series. My name is Mustafa al -Bacterius. I am inside the brain of Muriel. I have come up... Number 8. Mustafa al -Bacterius. 
My name is Mustafa Albacterius. I'm inside the brain of Muriel. I've come a great distance to sabotage your mission. The humans are not satisfied with messing with your own planet. You feel the need to mess with space also. Well, if the sun wants to fizzle, let it. We like it dark. So, get a flashlight and some D-cells. Cause it's lights out, space clowns. Meet this worm-like creature, one who has a rather disgusting face and a pair of exceedingly skinny arms that are mostly covered in black gloves. His character also wears a round helmet and features a jetpack-like belt. He might be the smallest villain of the saga, but having said that, do not disregard his tiny size because that is precisely what helps him enter human bodies, making his character not only powerful, but also dangerous as well. All he needs to do is go near the brain of the host, and from there, he is quite capable of taking full control of that person's mind, making them do whatever he wants them to. He also talks via the brain he has taken control of, something that certainly makes his character stand out from the rest of the villains, making Mustafa downright spooky. No wonder the victim of his possession begins to act quite odd, to the extent of actually going quite mad. Mind you, the last thing you'd want Mustafa to do is tamper with the brain of the host, and in the process, make the victim not only aggressive, but also insane. Getting rid of this yellowish-brown alien worm can be quite the task. After all, he is very stubborn. When it takes control of Muriel's nervous system in the episode entitled Mission to Space, he makes her do a number of ludicrous things. Muriel beats up Eustace, speaks gibberish, and also cuts Eustace's line when the latter is outside the spacecraft trying to get his hat back from the space toilet. He also fights Courage, who tries endless methods to extract him out of Muriel's brain. Mustafa's sole mission was to punish humanity for messing with their own planet and to stop the destruction from spreading into the galaxy. Also, just like his dark nature, this race apparently liked all things dark. While it's true that when Muriel is ultimately flung head first into the ship's toilet, Mustafa is sucked out of her head, eventually flying into space, but not before taking control of Eustace, revealing that it is now inside his head. Mister? Actually, it's Doctor. Doctor Gerbil. But my friends call me Lulu May. Number 9. Doc Gerbil. Science, my friends! Science! Well, who does not remember this mad scientist posing as a vacuum cleaning doctor, sucking up both Muriel and Eustace, and letting Courage know that he was finally free of all the torment inflicted on him by his owners? You're free now. Finally free. Doc Gerbil, as a developer of a variety of foods and cosmetics, believed in animal freedom, and even went to great extents to perform experiments on his human subjects. This brings us to what happened to Muriel and Eustace, post getting sucked into the vacuum cleaner. The nefarious doctor puts them through an assortment of trial tests, as acts of retribution on humans for exploiting animals. It goes without saying that the old couple was subjected to numerous grotesque experiments. If only his character did nothing more and left courage in peace. But when does that ever happen? Doc Gerbil was shown chasing the dog in a water boat next, before falling off a waterfall and meeting his impending doom. Although it was later disclosed that his character was very much alive. Agreed that he might be on the side of the more comical villains of the series, but there's still no denying that he was quite freaky and frightening at the same time. <laughs> Number 10. King of Flan. Say hello to the King of Flan. He looks more like an obese short man, featuring bright red hair, an oblong head, dark eyelids, thin limbs, and even uncrooked teeth. He is always seen with a broad smile. His sartorial sense certainly deserves a mention. He sports an olive shirt and a checkered vest in shades of purple and pink a matching bow tie, and a pair of bright red pants with black shoes. He is the proprietor of a company that makes flan and uses hypnotism to lure in customers, all of whom become morbidly obese after consuming too much of the flan. Both Muriel and Eustace were put under his hypnotic spell. The duo crosses many boundaries, like raiding a supermarket and even stealing a flan delivery truck. 
So, it could not come as any surprise when we tell you that the King of Flan was utterly evil by nature. Flan will destroy you. In fact, the manner in which he spoke, that particularly calm, hypnotizing, soft, hushed tones, especially while putting his victims in a state of trance, makes his character genuinely creepy. Also, the fact that he never, ever seems to lose his temper, and that freakishly wide smile never leaves his face, makes him all the more dangerous and quite a memorable villain in the series, if you ask us. Number 11. Cajun Fox It's hard to forget this orange fox here. He always had his sunglasses on, and in spite of being featured in only two episodes, this character culminated into one of Courage's most pivotal enemies. Appearing in episodes titled Cajun Granny Stew and Ball of Revenge, his persona is rather chilled and laid back. Picturing himself to have been born lucky, he can be exceedingly competitive when it comes time to securing the first position. Remembered primarily for his brutal offenses, we are stressing on how he literally wanted to boil Muriel in a pot of stew. His character not only knows how to drive a car, but also how to pilot a plane. Hold on, Muriel. I'm coming. Cajun Fox makes his second appearance in Ball of Revenge, along with Cats, Le Quack, Wermole, Giant Foot, and the Black Puddle Queen to get as much awaited revenge on Courage. We are taking a leap into guessing that the scene where Muriel was hung over a boiling pot was his brainchild. After all, he was still mad about being cooked alive, quite literally. He went after Courage in the dodgeball game by catapulting burning hot Cajun pierogi right into his mouth. His hatred was such that the Cajun fox was even ready for an oversized butcher knife to finish Courage once and for all. In the slab. Oh, suffer my curse. Number 12, King Ramses. Return the slab or suffer my curse. This dialogue of King Ramses alone was enough to instill fear inside every viewer, and it would be fair to say that more than the storyline, it was the personality of King Ramses that was unsettling, spooky, and inevitably one of the highlights of the whole series. Widely recognized as one of the best and creepiest episodes of Courage the Cowardly Dog, the story begins with Courage stumbling across an ancient stone tablet that he takes back to the farmhouse. Eustace, after discovering its incredible worth, simply refuses to return it, thus incurring the wrath of an ancient pharaoh who sends three nasty plagues on the family's way. Tonight, you will be visited by three plagues. Speaking of appearances, King Ramses was developed with the help of a CGI image of a flowing, mystifying figure in the middle of nowhere. That did the trick. Add to that an echoing voice, a dilapidated skeletal look, and burnt tangerine hair protruding from the skull gave the viewers goosebumps. Consequently, his constant appearance from a distance built up the tension taking the whole episode notches higher. Everything about this character is what one likes to call a blend of variety of visual dreads, conclusively making him one of the most petrifying, horror-striking villains of the series. Number 13, Sandman. Also known as the King of Sleep, Sandman dwells in a tall castle, one that is seemingly made out of sand, in the middle of the woods. In a pointless attempt to go to sleep, his character is seen counting sheep indefinitely. 632,498. From donning a purple pointed hat, a black eye mask, a pink jumpsuit, a pair of purple curly toed shoes, and a black cloak, Sandman flaunts his purple skin pointed ears in the episode entitled The Sandman Sleeps. Focusing on the episode, it is here that his character becomes very enraged because he cannot sleep. Later, when he gets to hear Muriel snoring away in glory, he comes all the way to the farmhouse to steal the magical sand that lets her sleep. This reverses the roles, and Sandman actually gets to sleep, and Muriel ends up spending numerous sleepless nights. She is drained and exhausted to the extent of even losing her grip on reality. One night, while taking her on a drive to try and help her get some sleep, 
Courage chances upon the Sandman snoring. He enters his castle to try and retrieve back Muriel's sand, but the Sandman wakes up and simply refuses to give back what he has taken. Sorry, I'm not giving it back. It is only after Courage discovers Sandman's lost teddy bear that he gives Courage back the sleeping sand, restoring Muriel back to her normal self and sleeping schedule. Do watch out for the Sandman here, who is not only selfish, but also quite the unusual villain that the show had to offer. Number 14. Bigfoot. One look at this Sasquatch here and he is bound to be misinterpreted as a savage beast. In reality, he is quite friendly. Or in other words, he is what one would call timid. The Bigfoot becomes quite troublesome when he is either frightened or lost. And then there's that ear-splitting roar that makes anyone misinterpret this entity. Appearing in the episode titled Courage Meets Bigfoot, his character makes way into nowhere after he decides to play outside the limits of his backyard, much against his mother's wishes. He was first spotted by Courage while rummaging through food in the garbage cans of the bags. Holding the raccoons responsible for the mess created outside, Muriel initially does not take things seriously, but we all know how the mind of Courage works, and he soon meets up with the creature face to face while the latter was trying to steal a homemade pie that Muriel had kept on the windowsill. The next morning, news regarding Bigfoot on the loose, terrorizing nowhere, was reported, along with price money for its capture. Certain elements, like the giant footprint of the creature, or say Bigfoot ravaging and growling at the mob, do make things exciting, giving the impression that Bigfoot was in every manner threatening, but then again with scenes like the food fight, where both the creature and Courage end up dancing together, can literally have one rolling on the floor laughing. It goes without saying that Bigfoot was much less of a villain and more inclined towards the misunderstood side, one who looked quite intimidating but in reality was not. Get back to work. Make me. Number 15. Robot Randy Addressing himself as the most powerful robot in the universe and donning a face of superiority, Robot Randy eventually found himself to be an object of mockery especially in a society jam-packed with violent robots. Post an intense letdown in the explosion department, he was sent to take over Earth to gain back his lost honor, absolutely determined to prove to his clan of robots that he was anything but a failure. Randy ended up taking over the big residency, enslaving Muriel, Eustace, as well as Courage. The robot does his best to make their lives miserable, in fact, even compels them to erect statues of him. But all of this happens before Courage learns that Randy might not be as fierce as he appears to be. Of course, Randy was quite capable of using his laser and blasting houses and even robots into pieces. But that wasn't his hobby. He was more like a secret whittler, a rather incredible one, specializing in reindeer sculptures. And that's not all. His character can also break dance. However, he just cannot tolerate insults. The scene where he easily blasts a robot after it is unimpressed with his work and asks him if he can make something else makes his character slide over to the villain's side. Do watch out for Robot Randy, who might not be an actual baddie, but this does qualify him as quite remarkable on our list. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. For Marvelous Videos, I'm Rylan. Have a good one and be safe.